Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Creating Essence. I am Megan, thank you so much for stopping by today. I am joining a few other amazing gardening mamas to share with you what we plan to plant in our garden this spring. If you're new here, welcome. I am a wife to one, mom to six, with number seven on the way, and we have a one and a quarter suburban acre homestead in central Virginia. I'm out here on my beautiful front porch and naturally as soon as I try to start filming a breeze picks up so you're gonna hear my wind chimes. Now I am a little bit late on getting started with my seed starts this year. Usually I have things started by the first week of February. It's going into the third week and I don't have it done yet because frankly all day sickness kind of kept us in survival mode so far. So I'm working on it. I'm aiming for this weekend, but we'll see. If everything goes as planned and I get things started as I need to this weekend, here's what I will be planting. In our trellised raised beds at the front of the house, we will be doing two kinds of snap peas. I've chosen the sugar snap peas and the wando peas. Peas are one of those things we really don't actually uh, preserve or anything they're kind of my kids snack food and I don't really care they can go out to the garden and eat a handful of peas or fill up on peas I'm fine with that for less than five dollars they're going to get a lot of snacks for the spring and beginning of summer have at it kids that's pretty cheap in my other raised beds in our front yard that are not taken up by strawberries or those trellis beds i'm going to be doing some different root vegetables here where we are in virginia we have kind of a mix of sand and hard red clay it really depends on where in our yard you dig we're in a we're smack dab in between the mountains and the beach so it seems like we kind of get both of them dumped into our yard. So we've found over the years that root vegetables do best in a raised bed. In one bed we'll be doing a whole lot of beets. I chose three varieties, the early wonder beets, Detroit dark red beets, and golden beets. In another one of those raised beds we will be doing some carrots. I've chosen the cosmic purple carrots, the Kuroda carrots, I think, and the ox heart carrots. In another one of the raised beds we're going to be doing a mix of bush beans and pole beans. Blue Lake pole beans, provider bush beans, and dragon tongue bush beans. We eat a lot of green beans around here, so I will do another planting of beans in the fall because we do have a really great fall growing season where we can get a lot of beans again. So these are just for spring and beginning of summer. Another thing I'll be putting in those raised beds are leeks. I've never grown leeks before, but we do eat a lot of leeks, so it's a new thing I'm giving a try this year. I'm also trying the Tokyo Green Cucumber on the trellises in our front yard. One particular spot of our garden is shaded about half the day, which works out really well because we do live in a pretty warm climate that gets some very intense summer sun. So we are able to plant greens and keep greens growing there pretty nicely through most of the hot summer. I'll be doing Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. We're going to try growing some cress this year. This fun lettuce I can't say. That one which I know is French but I also can't say. Butter crunch lettuce. And the tri-color romaine mix from Seeds for Generations. We'll also be putting some pak choy in. And two different kinds of chard. And of course can I garden without kale? The answer to that is no. Three different kinds of kale. The rest of the garden will be a pretty good mix of things like tomatoes and basil, companion planted together, and we have quite a few varieties of both. Last year we had, I believe, 13 different varieties of tomatoes, and we've definitely pulled out some that didn't grow well in our climate or that we just didn't like eating as much as others. And and then I added some things like more grape tomatoes and cherry tomatoes because my kids really love those tiny early tomatoes. We tried growing tomatillos last year. It didn't turn out well. We're trying one more year before we uh, throw in the towel on that one. Two new ones we're trying are the jujube cherry and the golden nugget tomato. The vintage wine, Rio Grande, Oregon Spring, and Black Sea Man are all new varieties we tried this we tried last year that we really liked and we'll be doing again. 
Two of our old standbys we never go without because we love so much are the Moskvich and the San Marzano. And then we have this new one that was a freebie at the end of last year from Baker Creek called the Purple Russian Tomato. We're gonna give it a try. I mentioned basil and we do a whole lot of herbs between companion planting in our main earth garden and then sprinkling different seedlings or direct sown things throughout all of our various permaculture beds and orchard. We did four different kinds of basil last year and we really liked them all. Our favorite is of course the sweet Genovese. We just always do it. We have for years and we probably always will. We also tried the cinnamon, the Siam Queen, and the purple ruffles last year and they were really fun to have. They were a little bit different if you ate them fresh and they all tasted the same once they were cooked and dried, so we'll be planting them again. I also have my standbys like sage, marjoram, thyme, and rosemary that I like to plant over in my permaculture blueberry bed that if they didn't come back from last year, will definitely be planted again. And then I have cilantro and flat leaf parsley that will be going in our orchard bed between our fruit trees. We also have some giant bouquet dill back there that is really pro really prolific and I don't have to worry about seeding again. Now I know I swore off squash a couple of years ago because of our horrible squash bug problem here in Virginia, but I found some great organic options that worked pretty well to hold them at bay for the end of the year last year. So I'm going to give some a try again this year. We did birdhouse gourds in the fall garden and they were fantastic. We also have the last of a little packet of Waltham buttermut squash, some Solor squash, and the big old Tahitian melon. I also have some Black Beauty zucchini somewhere around here and I can't find it right now, but that will be in the earth garden too. And one fun thing that the kids were really excited about that we will be growing out front in our raspberry beds between the canes will be some melons. We have some crimson sweet and some sugar baby watermelons. And then we have some yellow canary melon. Those are just for fun, but again, they're gonna be snack food. And on to peppers. We grew nine varieties of peppers last year. I'd like to say we scaled it down this year, but uh, I still have seven. But I love them all, so I really can't get rid of any of them. The one new one I added was the Hungarian hot wax peppers. And then we have our standard jalapenos, our sweet banana peppers, serrano peppers, the California wonder bell peppers, the mini bells, which we call lunchbox peppers around here, and the Italian Calabrian chilies that we found last year that were a special thing for my husband and actually ended up growing really well despite a slow start. We were able to dry them and make our own crushed red peppers out of them. They're so good. I guess that was only six. I just had doubles of the sweet banana peppers. And then we just have flowers. I do a lot of uh, companion planting and we also do a lot of planting just for fun. We have our bee garden out front where we do a lot of medicinals like bee balm, wild bergamot, lavender, echinacea, mullein, valerian, bulbs like lilies and gladiolas. We also like to do some cotton because it's really fun to grow. It's actually a gorgeous flower that turns into the balls of cotton later. And then we use the cotton for homeschool projects and such. So that will definitely be in our bee garden out front. And then we have a whole lot of flowers for fun and companion planting. We have more poppies this year. They're just something that's really beautiful that we love. Nasturtiums, we like to companion plant these with our cucumbers. They're beautiful, they help with the cucumber pests, and they also are edible. They taste just like arugula. If you have never tried eating nasturtium before, but you like arugula, I dare you. We also have three different kinds of sunflowers. We have the Titan, the Red Sun, and Mammoth. We just like sunflowers. And we do give the heads once they're dried out and fully grown to our chickens. So let's call them purposeful. We have calendula. We also have marigold that I set down in here somewhere. We do all of those as companion planting. And then I have four different kinds of zinnia. Starlight rose, the scabiosa mix, the purple prince, and the meteor. And that is it. Uh, throughout the various planting seasons, those are the things we're going to be planting in our garden this year. 
please go ahead and check out the other wonderful ladies that I'm doing this collaboration with. I will link all the channels down below. I know for sure there are two, there may be more, but all of them are wonderful mamas who do really great family gardens and you should check them out. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. If you like this video, as always, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to hang out for more.